Hello everybody. I'm Dr. Alam Musbah, professor of obstetrics and gynecology, faculty of medicine, Mansoura University. Let us try to answer some ask in gynecology. Okay, look to this picture, please, and define what is seen in one and the two in this picture. Look to this picture. This is one, and this is two. As you see, one is you try mass. This is leomyoma or fibroid or fibromyoma. Okay, so number one is leomyoma. What about number two? Number two showing hydrosalbex. The tube is dilated and there is fimbrial phimosis. So this is hydrosalbex. Okay. Okay. So number one is leomyoma. Number two is hydrosalbex. Go to the next slide, please. How to differentiate uterine mass from adenoxal mass? This is a very important question in gynecology. How to differentiate uterine mass from adenoxal mass? As you know, adenoxy include the fallopian tubes, ovary, and the commonest mass in the adenoxy is ovarian mass, ovarian cyst. Also others like hydrosalvinx, biosalvinx, tubovarian abscess, tumors, and the broad ligament mass. Okay, so I have many differential diagnoses. In uterine mass, I have also many differential diagnoses. On top of them is pregnancy, then leomyoma, okay, adenomyosis, polyps. Okay, okay, endometrial carcinoma, uterine sarcoma, all this uterine mass. Okay, how to differentiate uterine mass from adenoxal mass? This is a very important question, as I said. Let us try to differentiate from history, from abdominal examination, and from bimanual pelvic examination. Okay, from history, the age. Okay, from history, the age. The age of childbearing, as in leomyoma, is a disease of childbearing age. So, and the leomyoma is a very common lesion, benign humor in the uterus. So, the childbearing age is with uterine mass. While the older age, like ovarian, malignant ovarian tumor, is with older age as in advanced age okay so of course you try and mass and the next cell mass when i say age child beating age in leomyoma is more common so you try mass is more commoner in child beating age while ovarian tumor malignancy is occurs more in older age but every one has an exception of course because i can see the ovarian mass or tubal mass in child bearing age but we are we are saying what is more common okay but there is exception of course what about the complaint when the patient complaining of Vaginal bleeding or abnormal uterine bleeding, this is with uterine mass, more with uterine mass, not at the pixel mass. Okay? So, as regard the complaint, also, this is from history, age and the complaint. What about abdominal examination? The position of the mass. If the mass in the midline, this is more with the uterine mass. If the mass in lateral region, one iliac region, this is the next cell mass. What else? What else in abdominal examination? If the mass is solid, hard, 
consistency, this is mostly you try and mess as in you my own. A while, if it is cystic, it is more with adenix and mass because ovarian cyst is the commonest lesion in the ovary, more than solid. However, solid mass can be detected in the ovary, but cystic lesion is more common. Hydrosalvins, the biosalvins is cystic lesion, and so on. So, solid or hard mass is more with uterine mass, cystic is more with ovarian mass. However, there is exception, of course, as I said. What else in abdominal examination? There is test called finger blue test. If I can insinuate my finger below the mass while I'm doing abdominal examination, is it uterine or ovarian if I can insinuate my finger below the mass it is ovarian if I cannot insinuate my finger below the mass this is uterine because the mass the uterine mass is a bilby abdominal so I cannot reach below the mass but in ovarian mass becomes an abdominal organ when it is enlarged I can insinuate my finger below the mass this is called finger below test so I can insinuate my finger below the mass in ovarian mass, but not uterine mass. So as you see in abdominal examination, we said the position of the mass midline with uterine, lateral with adenixin. Consistency hard or solid, consistency more with uterine, cystic more with adenixin. Finger below test, I can insinuate my finger below the mass in adenixal or ovarian mass, but not in uterine mass. Okay? Okay. What about the bimanual examination? How to differentiate uterine mass from adenixal mass by bimanual examination? During bimanual examination, if I found this sulcus between the mass and the uterus, this is adenix. So, if there is sulcus between the mass and the uterus, this is adenix mass. If there is no sulcus, as in uterine mass, this is uterine mass. As in leomyoma, sorry. As in leomyoma, this is uterine mass. So, in the case of uterine mass, there is no sulcus. But in adenix mass, there is sulcus space or tunnel between the mass and the uterus. Of course, there is, are some exceptions. If there is ovarian malignancy infiltrating the uterine wall, there is no sulcus. If there is infection and adhesion to the uterine wall, there is no sulcus. So, if the adenixal mass or ovarian cyst or tumor adherent to the wall of the uterus, I cannot find the sulcus. It's considered as a one mass. But this is the exception. So, we want to know the rules first, then know some exception. So, sulcus between the adenexia and the, the mass and the uterus, this is adenexal mass. No sulcus, this is uterine mass. What else in bimanual pelvic examination. If I tried to do mobility of the mass, the mobility will be transmitted to the cervix while I'm doing BB examination. This is uterine mass. But if I'm trying to move at the next mass, the mobility, of course, will not be transmitted to the cervix. So, if the mobility of the mass transmitted to the cervix, this is uterine mass. If not, this is adenexal mass. By the way, because I forgot to say that, what about the movement of the mass by abdominal examination, side to side and up and down? Because I forgot to say it on abdominal examination. If the mass moving up and down and side to side, 
this is a pixel. If the mass move side to side but not up and down, this is it right? Of course. Okay. So this test is done during abdominal examination, movement from side to side, up and down. Side to side only, but not up and down, this is the try. Side to side and the up and down, positive, so this is a pixel mass. Okay? On bimanual pelvic examination, if I try to move the mass from side to side like this, this mobility will be transmitted to the surface. If it is you try mass, but if I try to move at the next cell mass, the mobility will not transmit it to the cells. This is another difference. So let us summarize what we said in this table as regard how to differentiate you try mass from at the next cell mass. This is the complete answer from history and examination from age. You try mass is more common at child bearing age at the next cell mass more common in older age, abnormal trim bleeding more common with the trim mass rare with adenexal lesion. Position of the mass usually central or midline, adenexal mass usually lateral. Mobility of the mass side to side only in your trim mass, but side to side and above and, and above and down in adenexal mass if it becomes abdominal. Transmission of the movement of the mass transmitted to the cervix present in uterine mass but not in adnexal mass. There is sulcus between the mass and the uterus in case of adnexal mass but not the uterine mass. Consistency mostly solid in uterine mass, cystic or solid in adnexal mass but more commonly cystic. This is the complete answer of how to differentiate clinically between uterine mass and the adnexal mass. So let us go to the next point, which is the differential diagnosis of prime mass. Maybe benign leomyoma, very common, as I said before, affecting large number of women between during the age of childbearing age, reaching up to 25%. Also leomyoma variant, the mitotically active one and the typical leomyoma, the uterine adenomyoma or diffuse adenomyosis, the uterine sarcoma, the uterine carcinosarcoma, endometrial carcinoma, metastatic neoplasm, endometrial polyp, endometrial herpeplasia, hematometria and the biometria when the uterus is filled with blood is called the hematometria. When the uterus is filled with pus, it's called biometric. Pregnancy, don't forget pregnancy, please. And put it number one, because any woman in childbearing age with a dry mass, you should exclude first. Pregnancy, don't forget this point, because it is very important. Because it's, if I ask you, what is the commonest uterus, uh, uh, enlarged uterus, the commonest cause of enlarged uterus in childbearing age, you should answer pregnancy, of course. Don't forget it. Let us go to the next important point. What is the differential diagnosis of the next cell mass? Okay, let us divide it into groups. The first group is gynecologic benign lesion. The second group, gynecologic malignant lesion. The third group, non-gynecologic benign lesion. The fourth group, non-gynecologic malignant lesion. So. Let us start with the gynecologic benign and malignant. Benign like functional cyst, corpus luteum cyst, follicular cyst, luteoma of pregnancy, also mature teratoma, ovarian torsion, serous and mucinous cystadenoma, polycystic ovary, cecal uteen cyst, ectopic pregnancy, endometrioma, hydrosalvings, leomyoma. What is leomyoma? I said leomyoma in the uterine mass, not at the next cell. But here leomyoma also can be broad ligament. Broad ligament leomyoma or ovarian fibroma. Also it affects the ovary. The ninth tumor of the ovary called the ovarian fibroma. Or leomyoma of the broad ligament. 
tubal ovarian abscess, all these gynecologic benign lesions. What about the gynecologic malignant lesions, like malignant ovarian tumor, like fallopian tube carcinoma? Okay, let us go to the non gynecologic lesions, whether benign or malignant. Benign, appendicular abscess, appendicitis, bladder diverticulum, diverticular abscess, pelvic kidney, nerve sheath tumor, urethral diverticulum, peritoneal cyst. What about the non gynecologic malignancy? GIT carcinoma giving metastasis to the ovary, what is called the Krakenberg tumor. Metastasis from breast, colon, retroperitoneal sarcomas. So this is the differential diagnosis of the next mass. And you should answer it like that. Gynecologic lesions, benign or malignant, or non-gynecologic lesion, benign and malignant. I hope it was clear enough. Thank you, everybody. This is my box published on Amazon, textbook of obstetric, textbook of gynecology, contraception handbook, and the multiple choice question book. And this is my site on Amazon as an author. And this is my site on YouTube channel where you can find many updated lecture and quizzes. Also, this is another scientific site belong to me. Thank you, everybody.